Okay, so the next thing I want to look at together is how does our client identify itself to the server? Now, this is a much bigger problem than we're going to tackle in this particular MP chat point. Um, if you were really building this app, you would need a way for users to authenticate, probably, before they actually submitted a rating for a course. Um, if you don't do that, your system is susceptible to you know, manipulation by somebody who just submits lots and lots and lots of ratings for the same class. Maybe they hate you know, CS173 and they just want to drive the rating to zero. And so you know, they submit lots and lots and lots of zero you know, ratings for the same class. If you don't identify the client that submitted the rating, then you, you know, you're susceptible to this. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to identify the client using a random identifier of a particular kind. Now that's not necessarily much better because I could create lots of those random identifiers very easily. Um, and that's the reason that a real app would use some type of authentication. So you'd log in using your Illinois address or something and then you would use that to, to be able to submit a rating. Um, but what we do need is we need a way for the server to distinguish between ratings from two different devices, or that's what we're going to build. Now, this is a little tricky to test, actually. Um, and so, you know, you're going to have to think carefully about this. You can certainly use our test suites to test it. They will test it. Um, but you also need to add this to your, to your application. Now, to do this, um, here's my suggestion. There's a couple different ways to do this. You do need an identifier. The type of identifier is something called a UUID. Uh, Java has built in support for this. You need an identifier and you need it in a place where you can get at it throughout your entire application. There's a file here that we haven't done much with, uh, but it's called Courseful Application. It's an application um, component for this particular Android app. What does that mean? It means that, you know, so activities come and go. We saw in the past how, you know, you start up an activity through an intent, and then if you hit the back button or you close that activity, that activity is gone. And so any information that was held in that activity class is now not available. Um, now there's some stuff that we actually want to have access to throughout the entire lifetime of the app, regardless of what activity is currently running or regardless of what screen we're currently on. Um, a good place to put this in what is in this class called the application class. This is always available. Uh, I'll show you both one example of, of, of how we use this, and then I'll get you started on thinking about how to use this to store this client identifier. So one of the pieces of information we already use throughout the app is a reference to the API client. The API client is used already um, in, and, and I, I'm not going to show too much of the code here because I'm starting to show some solution uh, bits, uh, but it's already used in your main application or main activity. Uh, I think I could show that probably. Um, it's already used in the main activity to make requests. Uh, so let's look at this. Uh, so you'll see when the main activity starts up, well, actually, hold on a second. Where, where, where does this get used? Um, I think it's called get client. Uh, yeah. So you'll see when the main activity starts up, it makes this request, right? Um, it says get summary. This is how it gets all the summary information that it uses to render the list. So what it does, and here's, here's the kind of way to do this. Um, there's one line that gets uh, the application. This can be done in any activity through this call, just get application. We have to cast it to a courseable application. Now we know that it's a courseable application because that's how we set up the project. So this is safe to do. And then there's this get course client method. That's just, right here. That's just a getter to provide access to a field on the application class. So, well, maybe I'll be nice and, and we'll do part of the work, right? So if I wanted to store a unique identifier, a string, um, how would I do that? Well, the first thing is I need to add a, a variable here, right? So I'll say private, uh, it's gonna be a type of string, client ID. And then I also, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and initialize it right here. Uh, UUID is a built-in, this is included in java.util. So this is a class that comes with Java, um, okay? So what I do is I create a new UUID. Well, sorry, I think it's a, there's, there's a static method called, yeah, random UUID. Um, now that doesn't give me a string. That gives me an actual UUID uh, object and I hit two string. And so what that's gonna do, and you'll see how this is gonna look. And in fact, why don't we go ahead and I'll, I'll just, uh, uh, you, you could print this off and on create or log it or whatever. Um, let me show you what these look like. Uh, random UID generator. Uh, 
Yeah. So this is what this is going to look like. And you might, you might see these, a couple of these hard-coded into the test suite. Um, there's a particular format for these. The idea here, which is pretty cool, is that um, if you create two of these anywhere on Earth, completely independently from each other, they should be distinct. And if you look at how much entropy is in this, right? So this is an hexadecimal format. You'll see it's a number, it's got some dashes here and there um, to make it a little bit more readable, but essentially this is a very, very long number. And so the number is so big that if you and I choose random ones at any given point in time, the idea is that the likelihood that we get a duplicate is like tiny, 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 so small that we don't have to worry about it. And so this is something that a lot of projects use to generate a unique identifier that should always be different than any other unique identifier ever generated anywhere on earth at any time right so it's essentially like this big pool of uniqueness that anybody can tap into so um what we'll what we'll do is that when the app starts up it'll set its client id to be this unique identifier then all you need to do here is finish this so that you actually have a getter so that you can get at it and then use that little piece of code from main activity anywhere you need uh, that client ID. Uh, and in particular, you're going to need it in your course activity because that's a place that you're going to be uh, adding and retrieving ratings. Um, so, so this is the approach to essentially uh, allowing each client in our system to identify themselves. Now, one thing you may notice is that with this model, every time the client restarts, or every time the app restarts, it gets a new unique identifier. So this is not a particularly good way to do this. It will work for the sake of the test suites, but you might want to look into, um, if you're ambitious, how to save this. There is a fairly straightforward and very Android um, idiomatic way to save uh, a, a string so that every time the app starts up, it now uses the same unique identifier. Right now, every time it starts up, it will use a new unique identifier. And so if you wanted to like destroy the rating of a class, you could start the app, rate the class, close it, start it up again, rate the app, you know, keep, keep doing that over and over and over again. And you'd be sending in more and more and more ratings to the server that it would consider to be distinct. Uh, so again, not a great solution to this uh, problem, uh, but you know what, this is gonna be sufficient for our test suites to work.